Lord, I come. I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brethren, the gospel invites us to accept the authority of Jesus Christ. His words and deeds give credibility to his identity as a son, the promised Messiah. As we stand before the altar of God, let us examine our conscience and ask ourselves, have I given Christ the authority to rule my life? The church today, and especially the Carmelites, celebrate the feast of Saint John of the Cross, a man who was totally preoccupied with Christ and union with Christ. For him to be a priest and a religious as a Carmelite meant nothing less than that union with Jesus Christ. We pray for the Carmelites all over the world that after his example, they might live for Christ and Christ alone. With contrite hearts we pray together, I confess, I confess to, to Almighty Lord, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. In those days, Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. And the Spirit of the God came upon him, and he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam the son of Boar, the oracle of the man whose eyes is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel, like palm groves that stretched afar, like gardens beside a river, 
like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. And he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam, the son of Boar, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let our response be. Teach me your paths, O Lord. Teach me your paths, O Lord. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the Lord, God of my salvation. Our response, teach me your paths, O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Our response, teach me your paths, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, he shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble he teaches his way. Our response, teach me your paths, O Lord. Kindly rise for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from men? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Voltaire, the French philosopher and a prolific writer of his time, he once remarked that we ought to judge people by their questions rather than their answers. We ought to judge people by their questions rather than their answers. There is some wisdom in what he said when we apply it to the Gospel of Matthew and especially to today's gospel passage, where the leaders of the synagogues question Jesus. All sorts of folks ask Jesus questions in Matthew's gospel. John the Baptist and then Pilate ask questions regarding the identity of Jesus. John wants to know whether he, Jesus is the one who they have been waiting for, he says, are you the one who we are waiting for? Pilate asks if he is the king of the Jews. The Pharisees and the scribes, the Sadducees, have their own set of questions. For example, they question Jesus and his disciples regarding the tradition of the elders. They question with regard to divorce, with regard to taxes, with regard to 
the role of the commandments? The disciples have their own set of questions. For example, in chapter 18, they ask Jesus, who is the greatest of all in the kingdom of heaven? Or they ask, what good deed do we do, do we have to do to, to go to, to receive eternal life? Peter will ask Jesus, how often must I forgive my brother? The disciples will ask again a little later, we have left everything for you, what do we get? All these questions, dear brethren, are very revealing. Today, we are told in the gospel that the leaders of the Jews question Jesus. By what authority? By whose authority do you do the things that you do? What does it reveal to us about these scribes and Pharisees and the elders? Well, the question reveals their pride. Their pride that blinded them from the truth. The pride that stopped them from accepting Jesus as the promised Messiah. It was their duty as the elders, as the leaders of the people of God to guide the people on how to distinguish between true and false. Was John the Baptist a true prophet or was he not? They knew the answer, but we are told that they do not answer. They are forced to experience a sort of humiliation because they have got greater humiliation if they answer the truth. And therefore, they remain silent with regard to the truth about John the Baptist. Dear brethren, the leaders during the time of Jesus are focusing on the external actions and works of Jesus. The Lord is also asking them a question. And when he's asking a question, he is drawing them towards their inner dispositions. Because their questions reveal what they are feeling about the power and authority of Jesus, the Son of God. Well, I told you a few statements earlier that they are experiencing a sort of a humiliation when they say that we do not know from where John received his power, his authority with regard to the baptism. At some point of life, either today or tomorrow, sin will bring about humiliation that we'll have to go through. The leaders don't give the true and the right answer, even if they know it, because they are playing safe. They, give, they try to give a very safe answer. As we prepare for the coming of the Lord, let us ask ourselves, do I sometimes, like the scribes and the Pharisees, sacrifice truth in order to play safe? What are some of the questions we have asked ourselves as we have been preparing for the coming of our Lord? The most relevant, relevant question we need to ask is not with regard to where the authority came when it comes to Jesus, but the question we need to ask ourselves is, am I ready to submit myself to the authority of Christ? Today we are celebrating the feast of St. John of the Cross a man who lived for Christ and Christ alone. What are the questions that he asked? Well, he asked very, very pertinent questions in his life. For example, what is the easiest way to reach union with Christ? And therefore, in his writings, he speaks about the ascent of Mount Carmel, the way we need to walk the shortest way reaching Christ, the way of self-denial, the way of nothingness. Dear friends, let us ask ourselves, are we prepared to accept the authority of Christ? What questions will we ask these days as we prepare for the coming of the Lord? Because they will reveal our inner dispositions. May the word of God inspire us to ask relevant questions and also to respond to the grace of the Advent season. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, dear brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, in commemoration of St. John of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now enact through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the Father's gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Philip Neri our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John on the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, Amen. now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Wants to come into our hearts that by his authority he might help us grow in the image and likeness of his own. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Be healed.
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, says the Lord. O God, who in St. John have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that, drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Stop.